Thank everybody for showing up and coming to celebrate this amazing. to our lives. Um, I'm going to introduce Kate, a good friend of Stormy's. I'm going to do a quick, you know, bio on Stormy. I'm going to come back, read a beautiful poem. And anybody who would like to speak, um, I guess, line up. And we'll do like about two minutes a person. And uh, so let's get it started. Here's Kate. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. The international gay community is deeply saddened by the loss of a pioneer of the modern day LGBTQ civil rights movement, Stormy Delivery. Often referred to as the Rosa Parks of the gay rights movement, Stormy was a fierce woman and advocate who stood up for our community on countless occasions. She passed away peacefully in her sleep on the morning of Saturday, May 24th, 2014. Stormy was an amazing and warm individual who spent her life taking care of people. It didn't matter if they were lesbian, gay, straight, young, old, trans transgender, questioning, bisexual, black, white, Latino. She treated everyone with the same warmth and compassion, kindness, conviction, courage, strength of spirit, and love. This led her to be dubbed the unofficial mother of our community, especially by those of us who knew her. She was not someone who tolerated injustice, though she was faced with it on an almost daily basis throughout most of her life. Stormy was a black lesbian who often presented as a black man. Although she could have easily passed for a white woman, she chose not to do so. Her love of people made Stormy an advocate and she stood up to all injustice wherever, whenever she encountered it or heard about it. It was this conviction that led her to change the world for the better for all of us. Stormy is accredited as having thrown the first punches during the Stonewall Uprising in June 1969. <laughs> her ongoing effort throughout decades of caring for our community that most people who knew her remember her. King Stormy DeLaverie has been the ambassador of the Stonewall Rebellion Veterans Association of which she was also a member since the summer of 1969. She worked at various bars in the West Village spanning decades including Henrietta Hudson. She was cared for later in life by her guardians Lisa Canistracy and Michelle Zalanoff. She will be deeply missed by them and the international LGBT community as a whole. She added so much light and love to all of our lives, and we are so much the better for it. We love you, Stormy. Uh, a very dear friend of Stormy wrote a poem to Stormy uh, in, around November 2012. It's magnificent, and I'd like to share it with everybody. Okay. Poem for Stormy. I write this because Martin had his mountaintop, and Rosa's feet were tired, and she had had enough. I write this because freedom isn't only fought for overseas in camouflage gear and combat boots. Sometimes war paint is made by Maybelline, and sometimes the king is a woman, and gender is nothing but a constructed illusion, and there's more to her than meets the eye, and silky voice singers wear suits, and defy convention even when convention is law. I write this because if I don't, invisibility will be the only way for us to be seen. Because sometimes boys dress like girls and girls dress like boys and genders are fluid. Mm -hmm. And cuffs are no longer the only bracelets we are allowed to wear. Mm -hmm. I write this because in 1969, at 57 Christopher Street, someone had the courage to say, enough is enough. I write this because blank pages fill history books. 
where stories of Bayou country warriors should be. Instead, we are taught that we never existed, and that gay rights are but a passing trend, and that Rosie and Ellen are groundbreakers, when seeds of revolution had already been planted in the West Village decades ago. Mm -hmm. See, it ain't easy being green. It's more than just an expression. It's a call to action, where the only response is resistance, where sometimes you have to fight back and say, enough is enough. Because Rosa had her bus, and Martin had his mountaintop, mm -hmm. and Stormy has her snowball. They say sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me, except when followed by a club or a fist. Mm -hmm. And Stormy had the courage to fight back and say, not tonight. Mm -hmm. I write this because when folks strut around in feathers and rainbow gear on hot Sundays in June, it is important to remember that it wasn't always like this, mm. and that the lady of the jewel box is one of the people we need to thank. I write this because there is a lady who, dressed like a man, who carries two sides of a coin, refusing to choose either one. I write this because it's easy to forget when ignorance is our teacher and portraits are never painted. See, I write this if nothing else but to say thank you. came into this community in New York City, I was walking around the streets of Manhattan with my Walkman on that only held cassettes. <laughs> and I was hanging outside of a bar, um, and Stormy was the bouncer. And she looked at me and she said, what are you listening to? And I said, oh, I'm listening to a song called This Bitter Earth, and it's by Dinah Washington. Do you want to hear it? Ooh. And she laughed at me. <laughs> she said, baby, let me tell you something. <laughs> Anytime I walked into a room where Dinah Washington was singing, mm. she would stop. <laughs> and she would start singing this bitter earth. <laughs> and then Stormy brought me the very next week seven cassette tapes of her private collection of Dinah Washington music. And I still have them to this day. <laughs> Um, I'm Irene, and uh, I'm 17 years old, and my daughter's 47. And most of you might be the been with, slept with, got drunk with. And <laughs> no, it goes to my story about Stormy. Every time that I, you know, I'm a big flirt, and every time I get drunk, and then we had her sort of Bonnie and Clyde, or Pandora, or Dutcher, blah, 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 blah. She would always be my pretend girlfriend. <laughs> I think that I am, but I, I mean, me, as I mean, for a better person and, and raising my child, and I think most of you, Betty and Carmen and, and Lisa, you know, my beautiful daughter, who had great, I mean, she loves me, I'm certainly a great role model, yeah. and I'm very <laughs> sorry, you know, when she would come, after she was sneaking into gay bars and I didn't know about it, Stormy would, you know, look after her, but it's just, you know, she was a pioneer, she was beautiful, and uh, we're all better for knowing her and, and uh, knowing people who haven't known her. And that's what I have to say. Thanks. Greetings, gay <laughs> greetings. Stormy would love this tonight, number one. It's a tremendous turnout and a nice variety of people. And for uh, many at SVA, it's like a reunion. I, for some people tonight I haven't seen in 10 years. And I wasn't going to get up, and I got a message. Stormy said, get up there. So, uh, but he would be really proud of all the people and turnout here tonight. And many of you I know 
Uh, no one from the Stonewall Veterans Association. What was stated was accurate. Stormy did throw the first punch, and I always say, if not the only punch. And <laughs> no one's on the fingernail. So, uh, and Stormy, uh, I'm sure most of you know, has been underrated and undercredited all these years. And that's why I, as a friend to Stormy, and by the way, Stormy was the founder of the Stonewall Rebellion Veterans Association right from the start at the Victoria Restaurant over on 14th Street. That's where we had our first meeting, July 11th. Stormy was there. And outside of myself, I have to tell you, no one had a better attendance record except in the last three years than Stormy. He very rarely missed a Stonewall Vets meeting. Uh, he's met seven mayors, including the current one. People are surprised at that, but you can look at the website, and there's me, Stormy, and Bill de Blasio, and uh, Kathy was there. Uh, when we had Bill, when he was running for public advocate, and he was so kind to Stormy, it stuck in our heads. He really went out of his way. Uh, and you'll see a picture if you go to the Stonewall Vets website, uh, which is www.stonewallvets.org. Hey, hey, no <laughs> well, you see, we have a whole file on Stormy. You're on it, too. And, uh, but I want to reiterate what was stated about Stormy with the first punch. He was there. Him and I knew each other at the Stonewall Club, and we were friends with a lot of the same people, but we didn't get to know each other until after that first night uh, when the rebellion started around 1.30 in the morning, and it went several nights, not just one night. And as uh, many of you know, Stormy always said, it was not a riot. I ain't no blanky blank effing rioter. And that's true, it was a Stonewall veterans uh, I mean, a Stonewall uh, rebellion or an uprising, as I said, it was not a riot. There was no one looting stores or breaking uh, windows or burning cars. It was nothing like that. And Stormy spoke at our conference every year, the annual conference, as some of you know. And so next month on uh, June 21st, Saturday at the uh, center on 13th Street, we're going to have a, a memorial tribute to Stormy and have some of the photos that have never been seen before in large put on the wall. And, and certainly Lisa would like you to speak at that, and uh, Kathy's going to speak to whoever else. Uh, it'll be a great tribute to Stormy. And we'll be ordering many public officials that they better have their ass there, or uh, we'll fix some other ways. So, uh, but everything you heard, uh, very accurate, and Stormy rarely missed a meeting or a parade. He was in them all these years until he, he couldn't the last couple of years, and he always walked to me. So, uh, I'm glad that all of you are here. It's nice being in close to Stormy. We've been out to dinner probably a thousand times. I was trying to figure out. Oh, and P.S. Uh, my mother's met Stormy many times. And Stormy said, your mother is the ultimate lady. They really click like this. And my mother, many times, in front of my boyfriend, too, was on his way, would say, Stormy is the perfect gentleman. It's too bad all your friends aren't like Stormy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hi. Um, wow. What can I say? Stormy is uh, an exceptional, phenomenal, phenomenal human being. I went a long time ago. My mother uh, took me to see a Jill Watts review. Just because she probably didn't have a babysitter or something. I don't know how I got it, but I did. And then many years later in college, I had to write uh, the history of the ballroom scene. And my professor said, why don't you interview Storm they said Stormy? She lives right here in New York City. And that, you know, I, I was scared. <laughs> Me is going to be an icon. And when I got to meet her, she said, sure. I called her up. She said, sure. We sat down. We had a drink. We she took me back to her hotel room, and we talked there some more, and she met me several other times. And, you know, she kept after me. She would contact me and say, well, how's the story going? Let me read it. I got an A on the report <laughs> on, that, on that thing. And we remained friends ever since. And, and I think, if all of you know, when you were in her presence, you sort of felt like you were in royalty. And, and, and it wasn't like she was conceited or big-headed. She just was so 
present and there, and, mm -hmm. and she is uh, an icon that's going to be sorely missed, but we will always remember, when I look around this room and see everybody that she brought together, I'm sure she's up there smiling now. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Hi, um, I'm Shredinger, and I, I've known Stormy from in Chelsea because I would always run into her all the time. She would always say, how you doing, baby? And it made me feel so good. And Stormy has such a beautiful presence. I mean, her, her voice was so gentle, and she, she, she always was like uh, fluid in anything she said. I mean, I, I loved her daily, and she's certainly going to be missed. Right now, she's right here in this room. Her beautiful, gentle spirit is in the air, blessing us all and thanking us for being here. Um, she, she used to talk about, you know, how she protected the girls at the bars, and nobody better mess with her. And believe me, nobody did. <laughs> Who would want to mess with Stormy? But you know, I, what I only regret was that I never really got to hear in the Jewel Box review. I really would have loved to hear that. So that's my only regret. But I feel like a much better person having known her and having her in my life. And right now, I feel here right so strong that she she loves us all. And, she, and her, her beautiful spirit will always continue to flow and bless us all. And there's so much to be thankful for what she did for us. So, Stormy, I thank you for being you. And you were truly special and will never, ever be forgotten. Love you so much. I started seeing my partner uh, 10 years ago, and we were in Queens walking around, and I stopped at a garage sale, which was in the middle of nowhere, and look what I got. Wow. This is the 25th anniversary of the Jewel Box Review. Wow. I knew nothing about Stormy or anybody in this until I met my friend, uh, Louis Shaw, who lives in my building, and he's, he used to go to the Apollo to see the Jewel Box review. And there's a picture of Stormy in here, uh, which is incredible. And anybody who would like to see it, I came tonight to share this with everybody. Yeah. There's a picture here. And another one. Let me see. Uh, anyway, this, there we go. So if anybody would like to see this, I came to share this with everybody and to celebrate her life. What's your name? My name is Joe. Joe Long. Hi, my name is Rose, and I have the amazing, amazing good fortune to be Stormy's next door neighbor for 24 years. And um, it was never boring. <laughs> I could just, I could frankly go talk about her all night long, but I have a few things that I, I think were particular to her that anybody who knew her will remember very well in their more or less sober moments. Um, Stormy would uh, police the hallway. And I, I mean police because <laughs> when she doubted that her fists could do it, she had uh, one to three guns tucked away in her body. <laughs> so it was the Chelsea Hotel, and the late 80s were pretty wild, and so every now and then she would open up the public bathroom on the floor, and she would see somebody shooting up who didn't belong there. And she would hike up her sweatshirt, and they would see a gun tucked in her pants, and she would say, you know, I think you best be out of here because if I see you around here again, I'm going to shoot you dead on the vine. <laughs> we, never, we never saw them again. 
<laughs> and um, another thing that she was very prone to saying, uh, I would go and visit her at all the different places that she would be doing security. And she wasn't just security, she was really a very welcoming and, and reassuring presence. And when people would walk in, she would say, there's, there's some people that she knew and she knew belonged, but she gave people uh, a try. She was generous, even if they didn't immediately fit the profile of somebody who belonged in the place. And she would say, hugging and kissing, no fussing and fighting. And that was her, her guidelines for being in a, in a place with other people. And um, the last thing that I wanted to share was, um, Stormy told me that she was, she would always say that, uh, you know, no karate, no nothing. She was born in the South, a mulatto. She said, I had a black, black mother and a white father. And when I was young, I was getting beaten up. And my father said, honey, if you run now, you'll be running for the rest of your life. Yeah. <coughs> She stopped running, and I think it's that whether or not, you know, the, some people say, well, we don't know who the first punch. You know what? Stormy embodied the spirit of Stonewall and Spotty, the spirit of the community. So, love and respect to Stormy Delarvery. Me about 1964, around there. Uh, I know you weren't born yet. I know. <laughs> uh, and I was work. I was about 16, 17 years old, and I was the bouncer at the Club Bohemia. Anybody remember the Club Bohemia? It was on Barrow Street, almost directly across from Stonewall, across the park. Uh, and she came in this night, and she had these gorgeous women on her arm. You know, and, you know it was just amazing. And I was like, whoa, you know, I want to be that. You know? And uh, I was sitting on the stage, and she, she had called me down and sitting at a booth. And it was dark, and it was black and everything. Uh, and she said I should get a job as a dude, you know, working in one of the clubs and everything, which I never did. Uh, but I so admired the way she dressed, you know, and such a gentleman with these women, you know, and was like, I want a daughter who's still on me. I'm almost there, you know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, she made quite an impression on me, and uh, I hadn't, you know, I hadn't seen her in like 40 years. And then my partner brought home that picture, that colored picture over there. And uh, I looked at it and it was like, holy shit, that's Stormy. You know, it was, uh, yeah, good memories. Very good memories. Thanks. Thank you. We have a very special person who's going to speak next. Her name is Sebastian. And she was um, Stormy's primary caregiver at where Stormy lived at Cab's nursing home. Mm -hmm. And Sebastian was just amazing with her. So, um, I'm nervous, but I'm so exceptionally honored to be here tonight, knowing Storm and Storm's extended family, and made me part of the family. I'm very sad, but at the same time, I'm very honored to be here to know Storm. I'm very sad, but um, on behalf of Cab's Nursing Home, we'd like to thank you 
but having her in our lives made me a better person, made me a better person to know that you can love. Mm. The most important thing is love. Mm -hmm. No matter what, who you are, what you are, is love. Mm -hmm. And she taught me that. One thing I used to say to Storm every morning is, this is the song I used to say to her. Mm -hmm. I used to say, Stormy weather. <laughs> <laughs> and Stormy would say to me, can't get my shit together. <laughs> And nothing could be even more admirable that she has gone with Maya Angela. How beautiful is that? And I'm so happy to be here tonight. I I work today and I said, I don't care. I'm going to get my shit together and be here. but half seat. <laughs> and I was like, I'm already sitting. She was like, well, you're going to be there for a really long time. <laughs> but in any case, as Sebastian said, um, when I heard about Stormy yesterday, I thought, wow, how apropos that Ms. Dr. Angelou asked, and so did Stormy. And I read the poem that Karen wrote, and I, The Phenomenal Woman is an amazing poem by Dr. Angelou, and I just thought, she wrote this for Stormy, not only for all of us, but for Stormy. So I appreciate everything that she's done for us and all the doors that she's opened so we can walk through those doors. Stormy, you're going to be missed. Wow. My name's Stephen. I met Stormy in 2001 at a Stonewall Veterans meeting, and uh, I continued to be with him and see him for all the years until now. Uh, many a time, you know, we go from the meeting, we go out to dinner, we marched in the parades together, in the pride parades, and Stormy, especially at the annual conference, would always tell the story about how she saw Williamson getting beat up by the cops on that first night of Stonewall, and how she was just coming through on review with a, on, on tour with the Jukebox Review, but her sense of justice was insulted, and she got right in there and slugged somebody and tried to stop it. 
Anyway, Stormy and I became good friends. I visited with Stormy at St. Vincent's when he was there, and then to the Oxford Nursing Home in Brooklyn, and then Stormy fell and spent all time at Brooklyn Hospital and ended up at Cab's Nursing Home, where, where Stormy would be for the rest of his time on Earth. And I visited him at Cab's many times. And the last time was the Sunday, just two weeks ago, I was in Brooklyn and I had a strong feeling like, oh, I got to see Stormy. It's been at least a month. I got to go see Stormy. So I went to see Stormy. I, I fed Stormy dinner. And then I was charging my cell phone while I was there and forgot all about it. And when I got home, my roommate said to me, we got a call from Camp's nursing home. You left your cell phone there. I said, oh, can't go back there tonight. I have to go back tomorrow. So I went back. On Monday, I teach, I'm a professor and I taught that day in the afternoon in Brooklyn anyway, so I went there, fed her lunch, and got to see Stormy one last time. And I'm um, so pleased, I'm so sad to see him go, but I'm so pleased that we had the times together that we did. Thank you all for coming. actually used to run a festival called Queer Black City. And I came across her, a film about her life um, called Stormy, um, A Lady in the Jewel Box. And I was told that she was still around. So I'm like, okay, I have to find out, you know, where is Stormy? So someone told me that Stormy's in Chelsea area, so in Chelsea Up Hotel. So I just went just hoping that, you know, I, I'll run into Stormy, and so I did. And we actually had lunch. Now, at the time, I didn't have a lot of money, but I knew, you know, to be respectful, you have to pay, you know, because this is your elder. So I ordered maybe some fries, something very low cost. Um, at the end of the lunch, you know, we had a wonderful time talking. Um, uh, Stormy actually pulled out a knot of money, and I'm saying to myself, I should have ordered something else. <laughs> <laughs> and I was real looking at that, but it was, it was wonderful, you know, being in Stormy's presence. I was just delighted to actually, you know, meet Stormy and to find out about her life and, you know, what she went through, what she had done, you know, even beyond the Stonewall. Um, riots, just her life in general, being a, a performer. And um, I actually got to share her, and um, invite her um, Stormy up to Harlem to speak um, on a panel. And you know, Stormy got to talk about the riots and what happened. And it was just wonderful, just you know, sharing what Stormy experiences was to a whole new generation. So I'm thankful to have met um, Michelle, um, Parkinson tonight, which is the director of the film, and just happy that, you know, I met Stormy and that, even though it was a short time because we met in 2009, um, I'm just happy to have, have met, you know, a, a great person. Thank you. Thank you. Folks, uh, my name is Robert West. Um, yeah, and like William Johnson said, all that you've heard about Stormy is true, right? And I'd like to just talk about the last three years of Stormy's life because I don't want to let you all know that she was not just laid up somewhere and helpless and hopeless. She was still a warrior. And I'm guilty myself of having that feeling because I'd go visit Stormy and I'd hold it together until I got in the elevator and I'd start crying and just think, ah. Then I ran into Rainbow D one day at the center, and she talked about Gladys and Stormy, and about how if enough of us come, things will change. Yeah. And I said, my Oprah moment, I said, aha, my girl's still representing. She's making it right, so when I get there, right? So, and from that day on, I didn't feel um, any type of sadness about going to see Stormy, or even leaving her there, because I knew she was capable of taking care of herself. And um, I wrote an article once, and I have to say, it's so great in life when you're proven wrong, you know? And in this article I said, you know, the people at the nursing home would never be able to uh, respect her in the way that she deserves. 
I was wrong. Yeah. I was wrong. And again, I doubted Stormy. And um, I can tell you this, I'll never doubt her um, again. Uh, I know she'll be with me for the rest of my life. And if I can say, if you have two feet, two feet, and two arms, and you can get up and go and see an elder, do it. Yes. They are icons. But guess what? Icons have needs, and they need you. And I can tell you, Stormy loved each and every one of you. I'd sit there and tell myself, I went dead, flipping through video. Pictures, ooh, look at me, I know who was getting married. I just said, I pretended like I knew him. So, you know, and she'd lean back and she'd smile, and every now and then she'd utter a word, you know, especially in the last two years. So she loved you. I can't tell you how much she loved our community. Um, yeah. Even more than macaroni and cheese. <laughs> and, uh, and, and just really, if, if, if anything, just to go, um, I encourage you. It's, it's, it's not a burden, it's so much fun. It's so much fun to spend time with your elders. Yeah. So, Amen, um, Lord, right thank there. you for um, yes. reminding me of that, Stormy. And uh, I promise you, um, I'll do what I can until these eyes close. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, hello, everybody. Um, my name is Lee Soldier. I'm the director of New York City Black Pride. Um, I was very, very honored uh, to meet Stormy. We gave Stormy an award. And um, I have to thank Lisa and Michelle and Robert for bringing Stormy down to the Schomburg Center so that we could honor her. I'm really emotional about it because we rarely get to honor a person of color in this community that has made such an impact. And I think that Stormy was an unsung hero. And it was very, very sad that half the community, especially the African American and the Latino community, didn't even know who she was. Um, so I felt like it was not just something that needed to get done. It was my responsibility to not just give her an award, but to start to educate the community of what was really happening at the time of Stormy. And I think people want to trivialize it and say, who threw the first punch? That's not even what it's all about. Stormy, just being who she was, was in defiance of the law. It was against the law to wear the clothing of the opposite sex. Stormy traveling in an interracial trans show representing transgender in itself, to me, needs to be applauded. I think that we just don't understand, we don't understand the knocks that the transgender community has done for the, for the rights that we take for granted. And a person like Stormy, to do it every day of her life, for Stormy to never be in denial of being mulatto, of being a black lesbian woman, when she didn't have to, um, she could have passed, but she stood up for who she was, really makes a statement about the leadership of the person that she was. So I think when people say, are we sure she threw the first punch? I think you are just missing the essence of the soul and the life. And the life. And the life of this is the microphone went off of the leadership that she was and what she represented. Besides just the Stonewall movement, the Jewel Box Review, uh, we need to pay homage to those people because they paved the way so we can have the freedom that we have today. Yeah. young man said? Hey, honey, let me tell you. 1969 was the year of change. You know how was 69. Okay? Yeah. It was very, very important. 
because I've always told the story over the years about what I knew about Stonewall. I was there late, but I was there. And the fact that over the years, and I say this without apology, over the years, how the movement went from pepper to salt. Understand this. And realize that we, in this community, we owe a debt of gratitude to Stormy. Be we black, white, blue, green, or indifference, it does not make a difference. Mm -hmm. The thing is that we're here today to honor someone who started on that path of the LGBT beginning of the movement. Give yourselves a hand for even coming this way. When we talk about elders, I'm an elder, and those of us that were out there in 1969, how important it is that we never forget and we ain't going to let you forget <laughs> what it was like in those days. I had a talk this morning. I got a call from Lee Soldier. I had been in Atlanta, Georgia. I had just come back from Atlanta. That was their gay pride weekend in Atlanta over this last past weekend. I didn't know that. Because over the years, what has happened was, when I was involved with Stonewall, and then for a few years, um, there are a lot of us that was involved in that first march that had gotten kicked out of some of the things that we were fighting for. I was in the civil rights movement. I had gone on voter registration in the South to help people give them the vote to write. I mean, give them the right to vote. When I got there, it was amazing to me that people didn't have running water. My home is in Saratoga Springs, New York. I was born in Albany, New York, and raised in Saratoga. My people, my mother's side of the family is Native American. My ancestors discovered the springs in Saratoga. My father is from the Caribbean. So to me, injustice was injustice. Now, fast forwarding to what happened. A lot of us had been involved in the Communist Party, Socialist Workers Party. Me and my sons was in the Black Panther Party. They were having witch hunts through all of these parties. And a lot of people got kicked out of the Socialist Workers Party because, oh, now they're so you know inclusive. But they weren't then. And a lot of people that got kicked out of the Communist Party <laughs> for being gay. They was having a witch hunt in the Black Panther Party. I just took my sons and left because I refused to be kicked out of anywhere. <laughs> and then that sunk. I'll never forget. I had friends that were in the closet, and I used to drive them up to P-Town. And on the night that this started, we were getting ready to go to P-Town, and somebody said, hey, there's, there's an uprising going on in the village at the Stonewall. And I said, okay, y'all. I had been in everybody else's the civil rights movement and all these other movements and whatnot fighting for everybody else's right. But I think that this is the time I'm coming home to the village. And honey, we stayed out in the street until that Monday. Wow. It was a whole weekend rebellion. And as Williamson said, and as others have said, no, it was not a riot. Because honey, being a Black Panther Party, I can tell you what a riot was. <laughs> Black people in California got sick and tired of being sick and tired. Mm. Honey, they went and they broke the windows, they turned over cars, they did everything to call attention to the fact that they were very being mistreated. The uprising in the village was a whole different thing. Everybody was sick and tired of being uh, sick and tired. And they wasn't going to take it anymore. Everybody had been to uptown to the wake of Judy Garland. And it rained on everybody's finery. And they went back to the Stonewall Cafe to mourn. And this was the night that the cops decided to pull one of their last and famous raids. Mm. And everybody said enough was enough. One of the gay guys that was in drag came out of the Stonewall and picked up a parking meter. 
people heard this, but this was this was real. And put it across the door so the cops inside could not get out. In those days, they had walkie talkies. They didn't have what they had now, or back, we probably none of us would have been able to tell the story. What kind of gear the cops have today? But they stopped the cops from getting out. And by the time they called for backup, honey, the word had spread all around the whole village. People were pouring out the bars everywhere and getting into the streets. And we stayed in the streets. Even at that time, I was a minister. And I had my collar on and was chased by a Catholic cop who said, oh, there's a faggot imitating the priest. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And by the time we ran up, we ran up, um, we, we ran out and we ran up Greenwich Street and we were going around and we got caught up in a cul-de-sac. I forget the name of the street, but anyway, the cop was coming and the two of us that was being chased there was a trash can cover. And I grabbed the trash can cover and hit the cop in the head so we could get away. By that time, and I think that's the time I think I saw Stormy. I, I know Stormy was fighting. You know, and she was defending somebody. Later on, I come to find out that it was Williamson and because of a car or something. But the thing was that people we have to remember, this is the 21st century. And I believe, and this is just a personal thing, I believe there should be a plaque at the Chelsea Hotel. Yes. Yeah. 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 There should be a plaque at Henrietta Hudson's. Cabs nursing home. Gladys, everybody remembers Gladys. Gladys never hardly ever missed the parade. I needed the storm. I knew Storm. At one time we were all involved in the Stonewall Veterans Association. And as it grew, that was Stormy's heart. This is what she believed in. This is the things that she loved. We have little to do today. I was honored last year at National Action Network, Reverend Al Sharpton's organization, as being a living legend still here to tell the story about Stonewall. I was the first lesbian gay um, liaison for National Action Network and Reverend Sharpton. And I did a lot of teaching and helping people get over their homophobia. Mm -hmm. And I'm doing that to this day. Now, last year, I was honored. I was really honored. On my 75th birthday, which was the 22nd of September last year, I called it right. my diamond birthday. They honored me my birthday party at the Stonewall Cafe. Mm I have also um, left behind and a lot of my friends. But the thing is this, for those of us that are living, we still have a lot of work to do. Thank God for all of us and all of you. New York State finally has same-sex marriage. Where do you think that came from? <laughs> And he said, and I heard this before, that the night that the same-sex marriage was signed into law in the state of New York, because New York being the empire state, it was shown around the world. My son called me from Australia. He lives in Australia now. He was telling his friends that, yeah, my mother was out there. They didn't believe him. <laughs> so what I told them was, look, Son, you go back and tell the gay community over there. If they want to know about the story of Stonewall, I have, there's still a few of us at that time, Stormy was still alive. That's not going to bring somebody that can really tell you the story. Pay our fare, we'll be there. <laughs> there you go. Another thing that happened, like recently, my great granddaughter called me. Because besides being a lesbian, a black lesbian, a minister, a mother, 
a grandmother and a great grandmother, I raised my kids understanding and knowing that this is the way it was. And if you didn't like it, when you get 18, goodbye. <laughs> the very first march on Washington that they had, I took my grandson. He was seven years old at the time. And a lot of the reporters, you know, we had went south and south sisters at that time. We were still south and south sisters. We had went down to the march on Washington. And I had my grandson with me. And the reporters asked him, are you gay? He said, no, my grandmother is. <laughs> <laughs> I came back and I had told Stormy about that story. And Stormy's quote, <coughs> Stormy's, com Stormy's comment to me was, how could you do it? <coughs> I said, how could I do what? She said, have children. I said, it was easy. <laughs> they didn't have artificial insemination in this <laughs> My family, Saratoga, I was married off when I was 14 years old. My family married me off because I was gay. And I was the talk of the town. Yeah. So you can imagine, doing a timeline forward, that by the time 1969 rolled around, honey, I had come home and I was going to fight to the end. Yeah. Stormy fought in the streets. I addressed the legislature in Auburn. I had addressed down in Washington, D.C. We still, and the fight continued. I love you, Stormy, and I know you're up there smiling. Don't let her work be in vain. Let us continue to carry on. as I've been giving lectures on black history, African history, and goddess awareness. People ask me, am I a Christian? Yeah, I'm not a European Christian. I'm an Ethiopian Christian to this point. In those scriptures, the mother is always on. So it's mother, father, Jesus, the three. And always remember, even in astrology, the most powerful numbers in the universe is three, five, seven, nine. Did we get it started in 1969 or what? Is that a rubber on the back? I mean, you know, I could talk better. Okay, I'm going to wrap it up with this. We'll leave you with a song. When you are through a storm, Hold your head up high and don't be afraid of the dark. At the end of the road, there's a golden time and the sweet silver song of the Lord. Walk on, walk on with hope in your heart and you'll never walk alone walk on remember how stormy walked on walk on remember how stormy fought walk on with hope in your heart and you'll never walk alone we are never alone because God loves us just the way we are. talking to my aunt in very hushed tones. 
they had gone to see the Jewel Box Review at the Howard Theater in Washington, D.C., where I'm from. And as I scooted by, my mother said, and you couldn't figure out which one was the man, and the man was the woman, and, the, and did you figure out who? And then she saw me scooch by, and she slammed the door. <laughs> my mother, the devout Catholic, set me on a path to make a film about Storm de la Vie called Stormy, the Lady of the Jewel Box. So I wanted to find out who that was. And at the time, being in my early 30s, having just finished that independent film on Betty Carter, the jazz singer, I wanted to explore the breadth and width of our talent as African American women. Thank you. And so my lawyer for my production company said, who was from New York, said, oh, oh yeah, I know Stormy. She's at the cubby hole. Let me, you know, hook y'all up. So I came up to, from DC, and Stormy and I had an afternoon together of discussion about would she be interested in, what did it entail, it's kind of revealing. And she had access for this young person who she knew not from the wallpaper on the wall. And she opened up worlds for me. And obviously she has opened up worlds for every one of the oh, yeah. people I'm seeing here today. Mm -hmm. You are a reflection of Storm's genius, gift, compassion, tenderness, fierceness, love. I thank you, Storm for the opportunity. We met a few more times. I want to thank Betty Weems for keeping me up with her as she went from nursing home situation from the Hotel Chelsea. I want to thank Angel for the big ups around the film. And I want to thank you, Stormy, forever and ever and ever for just setting the mark. This was an icon you could touch. All right. revolutionary who had the same color skin as ours were calling us names we kicked them out of the protest too and we said no we can't allow that to happen and I, I wanted to say something about police brutality because this is an issue of police brutality you know people said who who threw the first punch and I, I heard that a couple times but when the po what happened when the police threw the first punch and people were beat down and couldn't fight back and didn't hit back? What about the times before that? If you say she threw the first punch, you're wrong because they've been throwing the first punch ever since we've been around and we've existed. So we need to say that they threw the first punch. That has to be first and foremost and that this is a fight and we have to honor our leaders. I work with people 50 plus at the Gay and Lesbian Center in Los Angeles. We have to honor our militants and we have to honor our people and learn from them. You know, sometimes they talk about people being hard and being tough or whatever, but when the police come, who's tough? Well, who's the tough, who's the tough one? Some of the people who, some of the people who talk don't know and some of the people who don't know don't talk. So you who know who don't talk. So you need to make sure, you know, strength is about what you do in the face of adversity, not what you talk about before it. And the people who are strong, like Stormy, like people in this room, we need to learn from them and listen to them and fight against the police brutality and oppression that we still face today with the same militancy, even more of the militancy than before. And I just wanted to say thank you for having this and all the love and light and, and heartening things that people have said that knew her. And we just have to keep up the fight until we win. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Betty Weems, and I have known Stormy for a very long time. And I'm not going to repeat a lot of the things that people have said about Stormy. They all were true. Uh, from the time I met her until the time I visited her uh, in the nursing home. Uh, one of the things that I heard during the time when she was in the nursing home was, well, she doesn't know who we are. And to a lot of us, it didn't matter. Yeah. whether she recognized who we were or not. Every time I walked in the nursing home, a smile would come on her face, and that was enough for me. Mm -hmm. And getting back to uh, meeting Stormy, I mean, from the place I first met her uh, in class, so I sort of followed her from class to Henrietta's 
to five or to east of eight. And those of you who were in those various places know the fun we had if Stormy was there. And all we need to remember from this great woman is that we were all her babies. Yes. That was yes. the most important thing she yes. ever said to yes. you are my baby. Yes. Thank you very much. I met Stormy in, I think, 1964 in San Francisco. Uh, my name is Jim Porter. And she was with the Jewel Box Review, who was performing at a straight club uh, on, in North Beach. And uh, you've all said wonderful things. I want to thank you, first of all. I want to thank you and all the people that came and made the family that you care for. There's lots of myths, but the reality is that this tender, fierce woman affected everyone that she encountered. Yes. And for the young people in the room, before Stonewall, having a role model called the passing woman, life Stormy, was so, so important, just like the drag queens, the Charles Pierces, and the other performers that were pre-Stonewall pre-gender identity, pre all these things we have now, the courage to stand up and be herself. You know? And I'm going to say herself because that's what Tony says. You know? So let's not get caught up in language. This person would take care of you if you were in trouble. And she wouldn't let anyone fuck you over. Period. <laughs> Well, it's 9 o'clock, and uh, we have to start uh, leaving. Uh, thank you so much, everybody, for coming. Um, we're going to have some champagne and food at Henrietta's if anybody wants to come over. So um, thanks again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.